Hey guys and welcome to this quick video on how you can improve your mobility by doing three simple neuro exercises. And before I'm going to show and demonstrate the exercises to you, I just quickly want to talk a little bit about mobility, flexibility and what the brain actually has to do with all of that. Because a lot of people uh, that I've worked with, whether it's athletes or people that just want to improve their movement, they get really surprised by the fact how fast they can actually improve their range of motion sometimes within just a few drills and like a, maybe a few minutes after doing some neuro drills and the one thing that i think a lot of people don't really um, understand or like a, a very common myth is that a lot of people think that in order to actually improve your mobility and range of motion you need to stretch for hours and hours and hours and without that you can improve your range of motion and usually what they think they're doing with stretching is they think they're actually changing the length of the actual muscle okay they think okay i'm stretching so i'm actually physically like lengthening the muscle which is allowing me to be more flexible and that's actually not the case okay muscle length basically has zero to nothing to do with your mobility mobility is mainly controlled by your brain and specifically different areas of your brain that control what's called muscle tone okay so what is muscle tone muscle tone basically just describes the tension that a muscle is under okay if you have higher muscle tone then you are going to feel more stiffer if you have lower muscle tone you're going to feel obviously as if you're more flexible and you have more mobility okay and what, we're, what we can do with these specific neural drills is we can actually manipulate specific areas in the brain. We can manipulate different inputs that the brain receives, whether it's visual, vestibular, tactile, proprioceptive, interoceptive. And we can change the way the muscle holds tension. Again, the most important thing that I want you to understand is that your brain, again, controls muscle tone. And the more stressed the more threatened your brain will feel the more tension the muscle will be under okay so basically like like a lack of range of motion is oftentimes just a protection mechanism of your brain to actually make you feel safe and like keep you in your range of motion that the brain feels comfortable with okay the brain doesn't like you to go into ranges of motion that it doesn't really feel safe in okay so what we're gonna do is and and one thing that I want you to understand is that when we manipulate the inputs that come to the brain, again, visual, vestibular, tactile, that can oftentimes have immediate responses or like that can oftentimes give you immediate results in your mobility. And one, one example that I, that I always like to give here is actually foam rolling. A lot of people, they believe when they foam roll specific areas of their body, like for example, their um, vestus lateralis or like IT band, they think they're actually like changing something like in the tissue they think they're i don't know breaking up scar tissue or like they're manipulating fascia but that's actually not really the case what you're doing with foam rolling is you're sending your brain a different type of input so you're basically just manipulating the input that your brain receives and that will increase the neural stretch tolerance and that will improve oftentimes your rate of range of motion right away okay so it has nothing to do with the tissue it has everything to do with your brain and that's the cool thing with neuro training. With neuro training, we can focus on the inputs. We can focus on the different brain areas. We can also, I like to fuse it with biomechanics. So like just really understanding the neurology and the biomechanics side of things. And that can oftentimes give us really, really fast results in terms of range of motion and in terms of mobility and flexibility. So basically, bottom line, we're manipulating the brain areas that actually control muscle tone, which ultimately dictates how flexible or how tense we are in our mobility okay and the way i want you to do these drills is i want you to actually just test something you want to improve first okay that could be for example something like your forward bend okay that could be something like shoulder mobility okay that could be your neck mobility. So I want you to just pick specific movements that you want to improve and I want you to warm up. I just want you to see, okay, how far can you go before you do any of the drills, okay? I'm gonna warm up for about 30 seconds, 45 seconds, see how far you can go. Then you wanna do the drill. 
and then you want to retest, okay? And one thing that I definitely want to mention is that everyone will respond differently to these drills. So basically, you could have three different outcomes. So you can test your range of motion, you can do the drill, and then you can retest. And you can have three different outcomes. You can either get better, you can get worse, or nothing changes. And if, you know, if you get worse, if nothing changes, that oftentimes just means that your brain either doesn't feel safe with that drill or might not yet be ready for that drill. So you might need something else to actually stimulate your brain. Okay. So that is something that I just want you to understand. And like, this is how you're going to do these drills. Again, you're going to test something, you're going to do the drill, and then you're going to retest. And then again, I want you to see how do these drills affect your brain and your mobility. One thing that I really want to mention here is that like, these are just global drills okay so obviously when i work with clients one-on-one -on -one, i'm very specific with the drills that i choose and i actually guide them through a whole different host of assessments i look at their posture i look at their movements like i'm very specific with the drills that i pick and choose so i can't guarantee that this is working for you because every brain will respond differently to stimulus that's why it's always also really hard to say here are the three best neuro drills for mobility. It's almost impossible to say that, but we can, you know, I, again, we can just pick exercises and just play around with them. And this is basically what this video is for, okay? So the first drill that I wanna share with you is actually a vision drill, okay? Vision is our most dominant sensory input system. Like we, we rely so heavily on our vision that if you imagine like walking through your day with your eyes closed, it's pretty much impossible um, to survive, okay? That's why focusing on the visual system and visual input is really, really key. And the visual system is also deeply connected to your neck muscles, okay? so. Just by moving the eyes a certain way, just by getting the extraocular muscles to contract and move, we can oftentimes change the muscle tone, change some of the restrictions that we might have, for example, in our neck range of motion. That's why with the first assessment, what I actually want you to do is I want you to test your neck range of motion. You can do that by, for example, doing a few horizontal rotations of the neck, or you can do some lateral flexion of the neck and you just want to see how far you can go and again you just want to warm up a little bit then what i want you to do is i want you to do what's called the big h okay so you want to stretch out your arms completely two fingers like this you want to focus on first the right thumb and then you're going to bring that thumb out and then what you're doing is like without moving the neck you're just focusing on the thumb you're actually going to draw a big H. And what that is doing, it actually gets all six extraocular muscles on each eye involved. And that oftentimes can help impact the whole body muscle tone and specifically your neck range of motion. Okay, you wanna do that for about 45 to 60 seconds and then you wanna retest your neck range of motion. I can already tell that this immediately works for me. So I use this a lot for people, you know, that say, oh, my neck is tight, what can I do? I'm like, okay, do the big H drill, okay? So again, do the drill, again, first assess, do the drill, reassess and see if you can get better, okay? That's the first drill. The second drill that I wanna share is actually a tongue exercise, okay? I know it's like, sometimes a little bit hard to understand why the tongue is important for our brain or like why what the tongue has to do with mobility but again if we really take a step back from thinking about local tissue but thinking more of like a global muscle tone you will understand that the tongue actually has a really really big meaning to our brain because the tongue if you look at the motor and the somatosensory cortex the tongue has a really big representation there which means that our brain focuses a lot on what's happening with the tongue and just by sometimes moving the tongue a certain way or just getting the tongue to, to move we can influence our whole body okay and they actually did studies on changing tongue position and strength output and they found out that for example if you push the tongue to the roof of the mouth people are able to improve their extension strength in their in their leg up to 30 percent so you can see these influences of the tongue on not only 
something around the, the, the neck, around the face, but actually even the lower body. Okay. So it's really, really interesting to, to focus on the tongue when it comes to these things. And one exercise that I like to share here is just something as simple as a tongue pendulum. So you're basically just moving the tongue, tongue from left to right. So you're pushing it from the left cheek to the right cheek. Okay. And I want to do that again, 45 to 60 seconds, and then retest whatever you want to improve. Okay. So for example, again, you can test your neck, you can test your um, shoulder range of motion, you can test your forward bend, pick whatever tests you want. And then you just basically do the tongue drill and then you just reassess. Okay. So this is how it works. You just basically stand here and you move the tongue from left to right. Okay. 45 to 60 seconds and then reassess. The last drill that I want to share is a very natural movement that humans really like, which is rolling. Okay. If you think about sitting in a rocking chair, like rocking back and forth, that can be very relaxing and very soothing for your nervous system. Think about having a baby, holding a baby, rocking it back and forth. This is actually, again, very soothing for a nervous system. You might ask yourself, why is that? What we're doing with this, like with this exercise or like not with this exercise, but with this movement is actually we're stimulating the vestibular system and our vestibular system is our body's own balancing system. And when it comes to surviving, the vestibular system is absolutely crucial. And whenever the vestibular system sends conflicting signals, we get nauseous, we... You know, some people, they suffer from vertigo. Some people, they suffer from dizziness. And that just shows you how important the vestibular system is to our brain. Whenever the vestibular system doesn't send the signals to our brain that actually um, are clear, our brain will feel more threatened. And a lot of the times, if you actually look at people that, for example, had a concussion, you will hear from these people that everything changed, like their range of motion changed, um, their level of safety change and like all these things are really really important for your brain again when it comes to movement when it comes to mobility when it comes to um even things like you know mental clarity um there's a lot of research that goes into you know like the vestibular system being connected to things like even like autism um like hormonal issues, like we have all these connections of the vestibular system to various systems in our body. And the one drill that I want to share with you is actually just a simple rolling exercise. Okay. So basically what you need for this drill is you need a mat and then you just basically roll back and forth. So let me just uh, demonstrate this real quick to you. Okay. So the way this drill works is you're basically just sitting here, you probably need a mat or something like a um, like a carpet or something that's like not too hard um, to roll on. And then you basically just wrap your arms around your shins. And then you're just going into this position. You're closing your eyes. And then you're just rolling back and forth. And one little thing that, one little thing that you can add here is actually as you roll back, you want to inhale. Okay. This has more to do with your rib cage, your posterior rib cage. A lot of the people, they have a lot of restrictions around their upper rib cage and they can't really expand that area well. And actually, if you roll back and inhale, that's going to create a little bit more expansion here. Okay. So breathing again is also a really important thing to, to really focus on when we're talking about the brain. Again, you want to do that for about 45 to 60 seconds. Some people can't do it that long. You can also do it 20 to 30 seconds. Just make sure to find a rhythm that feels good to you. Some people might get a little bit nauseous from this. And, you know, it might feel a little bit weird. But again, it's a very good stimulus to your vestibular system, which again is your body's own balancing system that sits in our inner ear and measures if our body is in motion or not. Okay, guys, so I hope this was helpful. I hope you got a lot out of these three simple drills. Again, this is just, you know, the tip of the iceberg, just three simple exercises, nothing too crazy um, to eventually change your range of motion. So I really hope it, it helped and I hope you could see how 
easy sometimes it is to just manipulate your nervous system and change the input and change basically you know your range of motion and your mobility and your flexibility and if you're interested in learning more you can join one of our upcoming two-day neuro training online courses because this is where we're actually really diving deeply into neurology and i'm going to break down how you can assess brain function how you know like neurology ties together with biomechanics with movement and how you can actually improve um, some one's movement, performance, strength within the blink of an eye. Okay, so if you're interested in joining, check the details below and I hope to see you guys in the next video.